So hey everybody, a little while back Orthogonal Caster uh, messaged me and was like, hey, is it cool if I do an edit of the town of nowhere? And I was like, well, let's wait until certain things happen first, and then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll worry about it then. And then those things happened and then the series ended. So um, yeah, this is the town of nowhere edited by Orthogonal Caster. The only thing that they've edited out is the voting time, which somehow brings it from like two and a half hours down to like 30 minutes. It's like a huge drop in time investment and it's a lot more palatable to watch it's just what do you guys want to do and then me immediately being cut to saying what they want to do um it's a lot better again thank you orthogonal caster for doing this the video here starts directly as i'm doing the first lines of the series um so yeah you don't miss anything it's great and if you guys like this let me know and we'll do this for the next series as well maybe you can just do this for the after hours upload i don't know let me know what you think anyway enjoy you wake up to the smell of sulfur and rot some damn soul is screaming his lungs out your throat is dry and your body aches so hot and stuffy you can almost feel your skin melting off you're in hell or at least the closest thing to it, which happens to be an unair conditioned bus traveling through the middle of nowhere in West Texas. You currently, you recently lost your job, and shortly thereafter, your apartment. Shortly before that, you received a letter. Hey, you. First off, sorry to, we don't talk much. That's on me. I've been super busy moving things, and uh, things have been hard with the baby on the way. Daryl's been real great. I'm sure it'll all turn out okay. How are you? Work still treating you okay? When I was packing, I found this picture of us and I thought you'd get a kick out of it. If you ever get a chance, you should swing by if you ever get away from that job. It's really nice here. I think you'd like it. It's like a fairy tale. I know email or text would be faster, but this feels more personal. We used to be inseparable. I think that picture made me miss how close we were. Terror twins and all that. I think the black eyes when I beat up that kid for bullying you. I guess it's I've always been an overprotective sister. Love you, Elise. P.S. Please write back. Included in the envelope, uh, uh, let's see, uh, was the aforementioned picture of you and someone else you don't recognize who looks just like you, but with a black eye. The only problem is that you were an only child. So, you're on a bus, and it's arriving at its destination. You get off the bus at a, a corner near uh, a Starbucks, um... Real quick, uh, you do have stats. Currently, the stats you have are Can Do Attitude, which is at 10 and dropping. You also have a Reputation, which is unknown, and Horticord Culture. Um, let's really quick um, go over the map screen real quick. So that way I can kind of... Uh, oh, wait. I need to show you that you're in front of the Starbucks. There you go. That map. There it is. So let me show you the map screen. So there's a bunch of places in town you can go. Housing is here. This is the uh, different locations in town. The little um, knight from chess is the uh, indicator of where you are relative to anything else, right? Uh, housing is in this area. These are where all the different um, housing places, like houses that people live at. Good words. Um, located directly behind you is a Randall's, which for those of you that don't live in Texas is... Um, a subsidiary of Safeway, which is a, um, it's like a, uh, grocery store. It's like a middle-class grocery store. Next to that is a Home Depot. Over here, there's a church complete with a graveyard, small town church, small town graveyard. There's also a, a public library and a 7-Eleven. There's also a dollar store here right next to this church, right? Directly to your west, there's a park. To your southwest is City Hall. Uh, down the street a bit is a police station, a bank, and attached to it, an apartment. You uh, drove past uh, the apartment and bank on the way in. You drove down that road, that white line there. That is the road you drove up. Now, those are supposed to be hash marks. For some reason, they're weird gradients. I don't know what happened to the game at this point. Over here is the motel. You drove past it on your way in via the bus. Uh, on the other side of the street is a Ford dealership. Uh, the motel, you actually have a reservation at. Um, for some reason, um, you just decided to do that first and foremost. Um, you also uh, are right next to that Starbucks and a nail salon. Where would you like to go? Um, 
So it looks like a majority of the votes at this time are voting for 7-Eleven has what some people call coffee. We're now at the 7-Eleven, which is great. You arrive at the 7-Eleven. Um, at the 7-Eleven is the normal stuff you'd expect to see at a 7-Eleven. There's a, uh, you know, gas pumps. There's a Slurpee machine. Currently, you don't see anyone working at the 7-Eleven, though you do hear a sound behind the counter, which may indicate that there is someone there. Smell the cashier. The only thing you smell is just the general smell of rot in the room. You check behind the counter to see whether or not there is a cashier, and happen to find an eight-foot-tall thing. It has the face of a rotting deer skull and seems um, interested in your existence now. Seduce <laughs> is immediately thrown up in chat. The eight-foot creature is currently uh, digesting the last of a uh, shoe and a black khaki pair of pants. The thing, once it gets done eating the employee, addresses you uh, and says, I hope you can come out tomorrow. And leaves the 7-Eleven without addressing you any further. Alright, so now you're at a 7-Eleven. The coffee machine doesn't have any coffee. And uh, it seems like the uh, energy drinks are understocked. Also, I'm going to dock uh, a few points out of your can-do attitude because it is dropping. Um, let's go ahead and properties. Uh, can-do attitude. Let's drop that down to six now because you're in bad need of caffeine. Can we get a horniness stat? <sighs> okay, fine. I'm going to give you a sex appeal skill. It will be set to four because you've been on a bus all day out of 100. You're tired. You look like shit. So it looks like chat has um, decided in order to drink an illegal Slurpee, steal from the register, and then leave for Starbucks. These are out of 100. Yes, you're fucking dying. And you don't know anything about horticulture. You don't even really know what that word means, to be honest. So you decide that you're going to go ahead and drink an illegal Slurpee. You walk over to the counter and figure there's no real point in even busting out a cup. You're too tired for that, and the, the small size is too small, and the big size is just ridiculous. That's Texas size. Like, that's that's too much. So you just decide, you know what? No one's around. No shame. No one's going to stop you, and there's no evidence. So you just drop your head under the slurpy machine and just go ahead and start cranking that stuff into your mouth. After a few minutes of doing that and getting a successful brain freeze, you decide to head over to the register. Despite the fact that you just saw some sort of creature that you are now horny for, apparently, and I didn't really expect that. I should have. Um, despite the fact that you, you know, saw him eat someone, you decided that, yeah, it's, just go steal from the register. There's no blood or anything, so I guess he was eaten whole. The person who worked there. Did you know that most Slurpee machines have a remnants of fecal matter on the spigot? You attempt to get into the register, but without having any keys, there's not really much of a way to do that. The safe is unguarded, and really, if you just had infinite amount of time, you could probably break into it. But at some point, one would expect that someone is going to come along and, you know, steal the whole register. It's too heavy and you're too tired. Your can-do attitude isn't high enough to be able to achieve that goal. Ring something up. The So most registers, at least the ones at the store that I used to work at, had a thing where you had to enter your employee ID first before you could ring something up. And that's the case with this 7-Eleven as well. You, you can't ring anything up. That leaves us with leave for Starbucks. Because you've already stolen a Slurpee and already attempted to steal from the register. And you haven't been able to figure out how to do that. Eat the register. You just don't have the can-do attitude to do that right now. Seduce the register. It doesn't seem into you. You head back over to the Starbucks. Your uh, can-do attitude drops even more because you've been wandering around town drinking out of Slurpee machines. Despite the fact that it feels like it makes you feel good. It really doesn't. How do you increase your can-do attitude? Um, well, your can-do attitude increases with caffeine, sleep... Or good events happening to you. Um, can-do attitude has decreased again. We've d we've been through a lot. We deserve a higher can-do. You've been here for like three minutes. 
You got into town and immediately started stealing. I don't know what I expected from you. You go into the Starbucks, and as you're entering the Starbucks, uh, someone is exiting the Starbucks and tells whoever's working at the counter to fuck off and die. Which is just sort of the experience you expect working, you know, uh, customer service. You're now at Starbucks. The woman behind the counter is wearing a name badge that says Crystal. She asks you if you'd like anything to drink. Would you like anything to drink? Alright. So in order, the things are... Ask if she's seen a hot guy with a skull head wandering around here. Crystal responds. Yeah, I mean, she's he's not really my type, honestly. Like, I'm really not into that scene. Like, he's kind of... Uh, you know, the whole born-again thing is just not my cup of tea. Uh, are, are you going to order something? Like, or what? Um, the next answer on the list is I'd like a double risotto, vinte half soy, non-fat, decaf, organic hot chocolate, brownie, ice vanilla, double shot, gingerbread, frappuccino, hot, extra hot with foam, whipped cream, upside down, double blended on, and then it just stopped taking in answers because it was too long of an order. But yeah, she just sort of stands there while you say that and... <laughs> Most of that is not even really actually a drink option, but, you know, she writes it all down. Somehow she's able to uh, punch in all of those options and asks, okay, sure. C can I get a name with that? You tell her no. You don't want to give her your, your name. She says, it's been a very long day. I've got things to do tonight and not to sound rude, sir. But, like, can you just order? Can I take your name, sir and or madam? We haven't decided that yet. You know what we meant? No. Our name is no. You tell her, no, but really, my name is no. She stares at you blankly for a minute. Your reputation drops. Just gonna put minus question mark now, because it's probably lower than it was. Uh, are you, are you serious? Okay, fine then. All right, so here's the deal. I'll give it back. I'll give it back. But I have a date tonight. My boyfriend and I were going to a concert, and you're gonna, you're gonna take this. You're gonna be here. If you want to be an asshole like that, you do that. And with that. She leaves, taking her name with her. I'll give it back tonight. I'll come back. We'll close up. We can do the whole thing. I'm taking my tips, though. And with that, she leaves. You don't remember what your name is anymore. And now you're working at Starbucks. <laughs> On the plus side, everyone who's concerned about whether or not you had enough money to do anything. At least you have a job now, I guess. Free coffee, dude. Well, she didn't make it. So now, with your can-do attitude dropping and your fucks to give, uh, not even on the chart, you're gonna have to figure out how to make your own coffee. Eat the beans! Seems to be winning. With no one else in sight, despite the fa fact that the only sound effect I could find of a, you know, cafe was the, the, you know, sound of a cafe being filled. With no one in sight, there's really nothing to stop you from eating the caffeine bags of coffee yourself. So, you go and just pick up a whole handful and shove it into your mouth. This is ultimately a really bad idea. Have you guys ever actually eaten coffee beans raw? I have. It was a really bad idea. Over the radio, someone calls in and asks for Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas to be played yet again. Next up on the thing says, take orders but keep the money. Just like a proper uh, employee at a Starbucks or any sort of customer service chain, you have absolutely no can-do attitude to deal with any of the customers that come in. You've decided that it doesn't really matter. Next up in the list of things you decided to do, you decided to make the most addicting chocolate sugarless coffee you can. I'm going to give you like 30 into your can-do attitude now because, um... Coffee... It's not really good. <laughs> like, it'll pretend to give you a can-do attitude for a bit. You have a bit of can-do attitude for a while. Your sex appeal is still bad because you smell like a bus. Next on the list is cry. 
While waiting for anyone to show up into the place, you decide to cry. Just generally speaking at your lot in life. The guy you tried to hit on ran away from you. Your name is No, which is just awkward and everyone gives you shit for it. And um, now you've been tricked into uh, having to, to run a Starbucks by yourself. Just as lunchtime begins to roll around. Lunchtime rolls around and a series of older men walk in. All of which avoid any sort of contact with you or any sort of conversation with you. Take a break? Well, people just came in. They're all wearing sweater vests, and they all look very stuffy and boring. They all smell a bit like poop. None of them are talking to you. They've all sat down with their books, and they're starting to have a meeting without you. Poop. One of them approaches you. Can you back up, sir? Okay, so, r real quick. Some of the characters, I didn't have time to, like, put their bodies on, so just gonna have to, like, deal with the fact that some of these people are, like... Awkwardly close. Sorry about that. He's also in front of the counter and you're behind the counter. Just generally treat anything you're seeing as sort of a vague understanding of how the world is. Also, everything is vaporwave because that's the aesthetic I decided to go for for this game. It says, Hey, we're gonna have our meeting here today. Um, can I, um, but I, I didn't want to not order anything because that's kind of rude, so I'll, um, I'll take, um, hot water. I brought my own tea. I don't really want to, don't really want to pay for anything, if I'll be honest. You decide to burn down the Starbucks and lock everyone inside. Lacking the keys because Crystal took them with her and also the just threat of not being able to ever get your name back doesn't make that seem like a particularly great idea. On top of the fact that you're still pretty fucking tired and really can't go through with burning down an entire Starbucks without a lighter or any sort of flammable material, it's not going to be really possible. Opting to go with the second option while staring this man in the face without releasing any of this anger, you just decide to comply but charge him for the hot water. How much, um, how much, you can't name yourself something else. Your whole name has been taken. You have to tell him that that'll be 69 cents. He says, well, I guess. I mean, things are getting more expensive nowadays. I just figured hot water would be free. It's just hot water. I brought my own cup. I'm very eco-friendly. Just, okay. You ask for his name because, you know, you figure you can do that. Um, Crystal? If that's you pretending to be someone else, I, I, you have to tell me. Right now. Tell me. Lacking the ability to tell him what your real name is, and not being called Crystal, and not being able to lie changing your name, means that you can't really do that. You can't tell him, no, you're not Crystal either, because you've decided your name is no. So I guess you can't do that. Are you Crystal? To which you just respond blubbering for a minute, not being able to respond in the negative. Can we say Crystal stole our name? Sure. So in the lead, uh, as far as votes, it's a pretty close tie for steal his name and write all of what he just said on a cup. Uh, the differential being about two votes. So I'm just going to do steal his name and write all of what he just said on a cup. You ask him his name again, to which he says, If you're not Crystal, did she steal your name and that's why you can't tell me your name? And in which case... If you are Crystal, you already know my name, but I'm just going to tell you my name, but you can't have it. You can just know it. So you can know it, but it's not yours. So you can't steal it, okay? That's what I'm saying right now. I'm not saying you can have my name. You attempt to steal his name regardless, but you can't because you're not a fairy and don't have that ability. So instead of writing down what he eventually tells you is his name, which is Gerald, you just write down just a long-ass thing. In fact, it takes so long that the hot water just turns cold, and he just kind of stares at you and takes it anyway, not wanting to actually have to deal with any of this conversation any longer. Gerald leaves and goes to sit with his friends. All of his friends appear to be about the same age. You're losing a little bit of can-do attitude just by existing. I'm going to knock that down every now and then. 
We had a spike. That's just the caffeine talk. And every now and then it just feels like you get your second wind. Or I just mistyped something. I don't know. Anyway. I should feel like we should get some smart assery for that. Okay, fine. I'll give you a smart ass skill. I'm going to start you off with five. I'll give you more points in it when you deserve it. Smart ass skill gained. New skill unlocked. Gerald and his friends begin talking about the minutes and measures of their time at the... Also, Gerald didn't tip. He did pay the 69 cents, though, which you pocket, opting not to actually, like, do the rest of it. Because you decided you were going to steal all of the money that came out. So, up 69 cents. Good job. They're still there. They're still hanging out, just talking about stuff. What are they wearing? They're all wearing, like like earth tone cardigans and uh sweater vests we've won enough money for chicken nuggets we can buy chicken nuggets tonight can we drink actual coffee gerald does need to give a tip when he gives you the entire thing what are you wearing what are you wearing i don't know what are you wearing rev are we boy girl or anthropomorphic twitch chat well the reason i wanted to let you guys pick your name is because i probably would have just made it a dude, and then I was like, wait, why am I choosing what my people who are playing this game get to choose? That's not really how it works. We're gonna play until, like, for a bit. We're gonna get to the end of the day in the very least, hopefully without dying. Um, but I, I severely underestimated how horny you guys are for monsters, so there's that. Anyway, Gerald and his friends begin talking about notes and minutes from the time that they had for the last meeting they had, and begin pointing out that someone whose name is not going to actually be, you know, mentioned here is not going to come because last time he came, he didn't bring the Doritos. And on top of that, he said that he was going to, he was going to, um, he said he was going to use fireball and everyone knows fireball is overpowered and it's too big. And that's just not fair or nice. Um, so no doing that, like, do, no, you can't, no, stop saying come. Don't say come in chat. Everyone knows when he said he was going to cast Fireball that we could just cast Counterspell and then when we cast Counterspell it would stop. But he was like, ah, I'd just make it bigger. And that wasn't okay. And, and at some point you just need to learn how to stop. And then when he actually started to try and do stuff, it was, it was not okay. I think we're all agreed in that. We're not going to make drama. But now I'm the bad guy. He and his friends are writing mean messages about me on Facebook, and I'm, I'm just not about that. I'm not about that at all. But I guess I'm the most evil man in the world now. You decide to wander over to Gerald and his friends to start talking to them about whatever Facebook drama that they're involved in. Gerald looks a little bit confused, as does his friends who haven't bothered to make the portraits for, so there's that. Who, who are you again? To which you don't have an answer because you still don't know your name. To which you don't have an answer, so you just kind of stutter there for a minute. You ask to engage in this Facebook drama and see what this is all about. Seeing how there is no other customers, so there's nothing else to do. You can't say your name is Crystal because you can't say your name is anything other. Because you had... It's like your entire identity was stolen. You know? You can't just have your identity stolen and then go from there. Anyway, Gerald begins to regale you with the stories of him and his Facebook friend group and how, um... Listen, you don't know the guy, but when you know him, when you meet him, just... I'm the bad guy, apparently. I'm... I'm the bad guy here, and... 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 He... He just thinks that I'm an asshole because I'm... I'm controlling or whatever. I'm not being controlling, right, guys? The other men, uh, nod in agreement and agree with Gerald on his assessment. He, he, he said he was going to cast Fireball, but Fireball is not an option. You can't do that in a small room. You can't just cast spells willy-nilly. So we're going to start with him just telling you that, or you telling him that you like it when you he calls you Big Papa. I take it that Crystal has stolen your name, and then that's why you can't tell us your real name. So we'll just give you the nickname Big Papa, which is weird. I don't really want to call you that, if I'll be honest with you. But okay, Big Papa. You asked Gerald to teach you some spells. Well, 
do not know any spells. Most people learn spells very young. What are they teaching kids in school now? The Texas education system sucks. We're not doing anything. These teachers that just take our tax money and they don't even bother to use it on, on anything. I don't know what this is. I don't know why. I don't know why they're like that. It's just, what is my tax money going for if not to teach kids the things they need to know to become productive members of society? On top of that, I can't just teach you spells. People don't do spells. You're too young. If you do a spell, you might do something stupid like cast a fireball or whatever. And if you cast a fireball, then we might all die. That's the whole thing that we were getting into in the first place. You don't know any spells. You don't even really believe that magic is real. How old are we? I don't fucking know. Or too young or too old. I don't know how old you are. Okay, Boomer, cast Fireball. Listen, because they didn't teach you it in school, I'll go ahead and give you a breakdown. Magic is very, very unstable. If you just... If you just cast spells, it's too dangerous. You might kill someone, and that would be bad. Magic just wants to do what you tell it to, and if you did it, if it did what it, you told it to, you'd do it wrong. So you can't just do things like pass fireball, you'll kill someone like that. It's like a, a dog, like a puppy that just wants to do what you want it to, but it doesn't know what it's doing because it's kind of stupid. My point is, if I teach you a spell like fireball, then you'll end up killing everyone. If you want to know a spell, then sure, just... I'll teach you a simple one. You decide to tell Gerald you'd like to learn the spell Locate Sexy Monster. I'm not good with technology, but isn't there isn't that what Pokemon Go does? You can just isn't it a dating app? I, I I don't have grandchildren, but I hear the kids talking about it on Facebook. Can't you, can't you just use the, this? Magic is very dangerous and shouldn't be used for that kind of thing. He decides that you're just fucking with him and decides to stop talking to you about that. After a bit, they pack up and leave. Gerald has already paid 69 cents. When you check the tip jar, there's a lot of money in it. You don't remember anyone coming in to actually, like, give you tips, but, you know, there's that. The tip jar is full, and there's a bunch of, like, plates and stuff that's, you know, stacked up in the, the sink. As far as you can tell, like, there's a good, like, 30, 40 bucks in the tip jar. It's somehow also nighttime. You've wasted quite a bit of time just talking to Gerald and hanging out with them in general. It's getting late. Crystal should be getting home from her, uh, her, like, concert or whatever the fuck. Also gonna mess around with your stats for a minute. Hold up. Um, Smartass is gonna go up to, uh, seven, because I feel like you guys deserve that. Can do attitude. I'm gonna knock off a couple points. I think you're down to 25 now. Reputation... We're gonna go- we're gonna start you at 50, um, cause you've been kind of an asshole to everyone so far. At 100%, we'll assume that people like you a lot. That one will just, like, keep going. You still don't know what horticulture is, and your sex appeal is gonna drop because now you've been working a day shift at Starbucks on top of having been on a bus all day. Being a Starbucks barista makes you sexy. Do we smell like coffee now? Does that help with- You smell like coffee and sulfur and bus and sadness and, uh, no. How do we increase sex appeal? A bath would help. Take only the jar and not the money and pour the water into the jar and make the forbidden current tea. So I think we're going to do both of those together. So, opting to try and make something that would actually give you energy because the coffee really didn't do enough for you. You decide you're going to make some weird abomination of coins and money. So you pour some hot water into the, the tip jar. And uh, pull the tip jar money out. Sort of like you were steeping it like tea. And then attempt to drink it. It smells and tastes awful. How are we going to check into a booked hotel room without a name? This is part of the reason that you decided to not fuck it and leave. You really probably couldn't, could you? You drink the slurry for a minute and then realize this is a really stupid idea. I'm gonna, um, 
increase your smart ass skill by or eh, actually you'd kind of deserve to lose a little bit for that because you just drank money water that was gross and weird uh your sex appeal is gonna go down by a point because now your mouth just tastes like coins and uh you can't do attitude has dropped rapidly because uh doing that was dumb luckily no one saw you uh so your reputation didn't drop because of it Waiting around for a bit, having pocketed the money, or pocketed- No, wait, you decided- You guys actually opted not to take the money. You leave the wet money onto the counter, and then, uh, Crystal comes in. Crystal's back. She's had a good date with her boyfriend, and she smells you from across the room. Okay, so I'm gonna lock up. I'm gonna take this money, because it looks like you didn't clean, and, uh, your name is No. You can have it back now. Add jar to inventory. You have jar now. She decides to let you have that because you seem really set on it. What time is it? It's getting late. She tells you to get out so that way she can actually close up the Starbucks. You decide to leave not wanting to be there any longer than you have to be. I guess I should actually let you decide things rather than decide what you decide to do. What do you want to do now? Alright, so looks like votes have stagnated. You decide to tell her about Homestuck. You're a huge fan, and it's it's awesome, and it's great. There's so much lore, and so much stuff that needs to be learned, and there's so much to talk about. Like, it's so interesting. You tell her about the trolls, and the chat logs that go on for hours, and conversations that don't really mean anything, and um, really just whole hosts of information that don't do anything and don't achieve anything. You can't do attitude drops a little, or no, it should go up. Talking about Homestuck makes you happy. Talking about your hobbies makes you happy. Your reputation drops to 40 because she doesn't fucking care. Your sex appeal drops to 1 because I'm sure someone would find you sexy. And your smart ass will stay the same. I don't know if you're trying to flirt with me, but like, you should leave. Like, I'm just- I just want to finish up here. You could have at least cleaned up. I would have given you some tips. I would have helped you. I would have given you your coffee, but no, you know what? Get just get the fuck out. Just get the fuck out. I have a boyfriend. You smash the jar to get a shard weapon. She kind of just looks at you like What the fuck do you think you're doing? Get out of here. She said the fuck word. It's after hours. She's allowed to say fuck. You leave the Starbucks because that's not going anywhere. She's locked up, and she's still busy inside there cleaning. You can hear the radio play yet another iteration of All I Want for Christmas is You, and decide that probably now is the time to go and stop harassing this woman. Are we explicitly banned? The store's closed. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> the store is fucking closed, guys. You can't shop there anymore. The store's closed. That's how normal stores do. You also asked to check your inventory. You've got a baggage full of clothing. Uh, check map. You know what? That's fair. Let's check the map real quick. It's also like nighttime. I should I should probably have a clock on screen. That'll be an update later. How are we not dead yet? Well, you're just tired. You're not dead. Where do you live? Well, you don't live in this town. You live in... I don't know. I'm gonna go with Round Rock. Or Austin. Georgetown. Somewhere in Central Texas. Is there a gun store in this town? While we're waiting for people to vote, I should also probably bring that up. Um, so the places that are available for you guys to go to, in order, are the housing area. This is where people live, theoretically. You've also got uh, the Randalls and Home Depot. Randalls, again, being a grocery store chain local to Austin and, you know, just Texas in general. You got the church, the dollar store, the library, and the 7-Eleven. Where you met that mysterious stranger you've just fallen in love with. There's uh, the park that you're standing near. City Hall. Um, the police station. A bank. An adjacent apartment. Uh, the motel that you have a reservation at. A Ford dealership. And the Starbucks and nail salon that you're standing in front of. Alright, it looks like in order, uh, go to motel, get nails done are pretty, like, equal. So, I'm going to go with go get our nails done first and just tell you guys that it, the nail place seems to be closed. It is night now. So, you know, you're not going to be able to go in there and get your nails done. Um, 
so now's really not the time to get your nails done. So instead, you decide to start walking towards your motel. Lacking any sort of transportation, aside from your feet, you begin walking down the street. You get onto the bridge that you pass on the way here. Along the bridge, there's a toll booth. There's a man sitting there waiting for you. It's the middle of the night, and he's kind of just looking at a small TV, watching whatever he's watching, fucking around on his phone rather than paying attention to you or anything that's going on. He's not homeless, but I'll go ahead and let you take a deep whiff of the man who works on the bridge. Looks like the voting has stopped, so it looks like the answer is by a significant mar margin. Slash your hand and ask the toll booth operator if you can pay in blood. You walk up to the toll booth operator and slash your hand actively in front of him. He gives you a weird look because he didn't know you were there first off, and second off, that was a weird thing to do. You begin bleeding profusely and ask if you can pay him blood. Nah, you, you can just go. You right? That's, that's not right. I'm gonna go and dock you some reputation because that was a fucking weird thing to do. Your sex appeal has also dropped to zero. You're bleeding out. You can't do attitude has also dropped some because, I don't know, bleeding is, just makes me tired. Alright, so next in line was take a whiff of the man. You smell the man, hesitantly, as he begins to be even more concerned about your... <laughs> Why are you guys like this? You haven't been able to destroy your horticulture stat because it's not something you can actively, like, get involved with. <laughs> you smell the man. <sighs> I'm gonna tell you right now, you need to get out of here. I don't know what you've been drinking, but you need to get home before I arrest you. You continue on to the motel because that's the second or the third place option. And otherwise you're gonna get arrested by the... the guy at the toll bridge. You made it to the motel. Finally. You're bleeding. You're tired. You've achieved very little. You have no idea where this Elise person could be, but at least you're at your motel. It's late enough that you're able to still check in. Fortunately, they have someone at the front desk. You open the door to the reception area of the motel. There's a man sitting there. You ask for first aid, then do a really big jump. The man's confused and asks if you have a, like, if you're okay. He he goes into the back and gets a first aid kit for you. I'm gonna go ahead and cut your reputation down a bit because he walked into the room bleeding. If you can talk your way out of it, I'll give it back. What happened to you? He asks. In a curious but also not really wanting to know tone. It's been a rough day and I don't want to talk about it. He says, fair enough. This isn't really the kind of place that you do that. I don't know if you're... Well, you're not from around here, so I don't want you to be causing any trouble. I don't know what you did today, but don't bring any trouble here. He finishes bandaging your hand and you, uh, are given your room key and are allowed to go back to your room. Which is a thing you decided, so I'm gonna let you guys do that now. So, he goes away now. You're into your hotel room. It's, um, small, dark, dank, gross. Really just kind of awful in every way. I'm gonna give you guys a few more points into reputation because you didn't botch that. Uh, I'll bump it up to 30. That was a good enough excuse. Um, you can't do attitude. I'm gonna drop to 10 because the caffeine's wearing off. Um, you don't really get any more uh, points. Shower? Okay, cool. I think everyone uh, agrees that we're gonna take a shower. I'm not even gonna do a vote on that one. So, shower, I'm gonna give, um, I'm gonna bump your can-do attitude up to 15. I'm gonna bring your sex appeal back up to, uh, let's go with 60. You're still tired and you look like shit, but you're at least clean now. I think if you get a good night's sleep, we'll give you a full sex appeal back. Why not 69? You know what? Just because you said that, 69 and one point in smartass. We gotta get that cryptid boyfriend. <laughs> Your lust for the sexy boyfriend is high, but it's really late at night, and you really just... <laughs> you're tired. Perform a dark ritual at the witching hour to get hot boyfriend is the winning result. Not knowing anything about magic, this is going to be very difficult. You do have a, like, fresh blood wound, and you don't know a thing or two about horticulture. Like, trees and... 
Like, I don't know, like, cactuses exist? So you decide to implement a little bit of that. You find a plant in the room and use that. Combining your knowledge of horticulture with your fresh blood wounds, you attempt to do something that you saw in a movie once. You know, pentagram, all of that. You don't know as if it really did anything, but it makes you feel good. After doing your ritual to get a hot boyfriend, you jerk off. It was fun. You're even more tired now, but you also are a mess. I don't know why I let you do that. Your can-do attitude is now at five. You're happy, but tired. I'm not going to ascertain what kind of downstairs mix-up you have, because I don't think that's important. After that, you crawl under the mattress and become a bed sandwich. It's safer to sleep in between the, the mattress and the bed frame, and... Despite the fact that this is a grungy motel, you figure it's probably safe there. It smells even worse under the bed. Jerking it implies male. You know what? Like, I I'm just... Everyone can jerk it, you know? You fall asleep in between the mattress and the frame. Wasn't exactly the most comfortable sleep, but you do eventually drift off. In the middle of the night, you're awoken. Despite the fact that you've put yourself in between the mattress frame and the, the mattress, you're still woken up. There's a knock at your door. Could it possibly be your dream boyfriend has come back to meet you in the middle of the night? Did I spell whole- <laughs> Okay, so your horticulture skill is apparently so low that you've spelled it wrong. I'm gonna blame you guys for that. We've been saying it since we first saw it. I- Okay, fine. I know it was like on screen before you guys even knew this was a thing, but you know. Horticulture is garden related. Honestly, I just threw it on there so you guys would understand what skills were supposed to be. Alright, it looks like come to the door and only underpants and strike a pose uh, is the winner. Knock back is a close second. So I'm going to say that you do both. You knock on the door, then swing it open wearing only your underpants and si strike the sexiest pose that your 69 sex appeal can muster. Oh, uh, hi. Welcome to the neighborhood. Um, uh, hi. Um, my name's Sam. Um, <laughs> and, and I just, I wanted to wake you, welcome you to the, uh, the, 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 the neighborhood. Um, I, I'm, I'm with the, uh, the, the, the vampire appreciation and, um, uh, acknowledgement. Uh, group and, and I just wanted to I just wanted to get a moment of your time to tell you about like some of the things that uh, are, are, are Misconceptions about vampires and like we really do just have a really bad reputation and so um, You know ra ra rather rather than um, uh, you, Actually, can I just come in it's kind of cold You decide to ask him if he's ever been saved by troll Jigas um you know, I'm not really the religious type. Um, that's, uh, I, I mean, you know, uh, that's that's not really for me. But like, uh, it, man, Burr, it's, it's cold out here. Is it all right if I come in? It's just really super cold and, um, yeah. The next answer on the list is, no, you're in a damn hotel, asshole, followed by, tell him your name, no. You say no and slam the door in his face, or shut the door in his face. Bonk. You go back to your bed because there's no point in really having this conversation any longer. Did we get sleep? I'm going to mess around with your stats for a minute to represent that you got some sleep. And with that, I think, uh, I think it's alright to say that you guys went back to sleep. Is that fine? Probably between the, the mattress and the, the bed frame for whatever fucking reason, because you guys are weird. You drift off asleep one more time. It's our hotel room. It's our private space. It's a power move. Wait, our sex appeal is super high. Won't our rep go up? I mean, theoretically, but, you know, you're also being weird. So I should probably cut your sex appeal for that. In the middle of the night, again, you're awoken by more knocking on the door. You knock again on the door and... Open the door with a nice, sexy pose. The sexiest one you can muster with the can-do attitude that you have available to you. Hey again, I feel like we got off on the wrong foot. Um, you know, vampires really do have, 
a really bad reputation and it's and it's just because of the media it's like sharks you know that we don't hurt people you know it <laughs> it's 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 really not that it's not mm, it's really not that big of a deal and that's why i want to have this one-on-one -on -one with you because i just i don't anyway would you mind just letting me in um so like you know there's a lot of movies out there and they really just um like it, it's it's a problem because like it's really not fair to me or my culture because it, it it it's it's honestly it's kind of racist it's kind of racist what the what hollywood is doing to the vampires we're not all transylvanian some of us are from texas you know um and and i just i i want to get through this barrier i want us to know um what it's really like you know to be you slam the door in his face again because you're really just not dealing with that shit. You walk back over to the bed, getting ready to have another sleep when the door is knocked on yet again. You decide to shout, and I assume, are we shouting, bring me hot skull head or go away? Threaten him with, okay. So it seems like we could probably combine the top three all together. So you go and get the Bible off the table. They always have one just kind of laying about. Um, Open the door and prepare to vibe check whoever's on the other side of it while screaming, bring me hot skull head or go away. Hey, um, hey, there's like a, there's like a vampire running around out here. And I was just, I was just, can, can you let me in? Like, holy crap, he's going to try and kill me. You throw the Bi Bible at him, like the entire book. It just sort of bounces off him. Ow, why? Just help me. There's, there's a vampire out here. I can't believe you vibe checked him with a Bible. Vibe check. <laughs> you checked his vibe with the Bible. It just sort of bounced off of him. It didn't seem to work. Do you have hot skull headed dude? If not, get the fuck out. You ask him. Um, yeah, I know that guy, but there's still this whole vampire situation. Maybe, maybe I, I've got a map in my pocket and I could just show you where the, the, the that guy lives. I'm going to make vibe check a skill now. Because it has to be. So it says, keep the door open and just to spite him. Also, to avoid him being able... Because the door opens inward, he isn't, won't be able to cross the threshold. Because this gentleman might be a vampire, you think. You decide to, rather than, like, shut the door and allow him to knock it again, you'll just leave it open. And if he truly is a vampire, he won't be able to get in. With that, you just walk over to your bed and fall back asleep. I think I'm going to go and bump up your skills to full with that. Um, I think that's where we'll call this first episode of the town of nowhere.